Hi. <laughs> I just wanted to make an intro to the intro to the intro to the intro to the video. Uh, I just woke up after a couple hours of falling asleep in the chair here. Unfortunately, when I tend to do that, especially when I'm bleeding from my dental surgery, I tend to drool. I'm wearing my coat for two reasons because of that. Number one, I'm freezing. When you lose 130 pounds, like in eight months, oh my God, is it cold all the time, all the freaking time. But then, like I said, it's a, Anyway, green is here. <sighs> Yay. I was drooling blood while sleeping. Yay. It's not much as you can see. But the fact that I drooled any while sleeping ain't good. Still. Looking a lot better now. Thank you for the intro to 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 the video. Oh, and there's an intro to an intro. I thought I'd do an intro to an intro on this one uh, because I keep forgetting to talk about it. I personally think the term YouTuber is freaking hysterical. YouTuber? I mean, I remember when, not that long ago, when Google first bought YouTube from Bobo Rebozo and Rebozo Rebobo. I can't remember their name. But they had made it up and then Google bought it. And, you know, so there was a life before YouTube, in fact. For those of you people that have been growing up where there's always been YouTube, it's only like 10 years old. It's barely been around. And so, Tuber, you gotta remember, Tuber's a potato. You know, whether it's a regular potato or a sweet potato of some kind, that's what a Tuber is. A Tuber is a root plant and you eat the root that's a tuber and so youtuber i was like well i we're all a bunch of potato based products here and so i've got an idea i'm gonna make this together i got an idea for a t-shirt mugs and stuff like that it's a picture and i saw the perfect yam sweet potato which is a tuber at the store just earlier today. I want to have a picture of a potato and then it says up above, up above, YouTuber. Now I are one. The more you think about it, funnier it gets. Really, it does. So I'm going to be coming up with a design for that. And who knows? If I figure out how Cafe Press or whatever works, I'll. Might be able to have some t-shirts and stuff available if I can figure out how these print on demand we get a chunk of whatever it is and don't charge you for stuff thing is and how they work etc etc you should buy one when I come out with and a mug and a hat youtuber now I own one of course now someone's gonna take it and I'm gonna lose everything in fact when I come out with mine I'm gonna get sued for stealing my idea. Not brilliant. Maybe I won't publish this. Well, howdy, 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 boys and girls, men and women, animal, vegetable, mineral, plus machine intelligences and our various other dimensional and Lovecraftian intelligences. All welcome. Lot to cover today. All of it in weird intermixed parts and sort of rambling together but it covers a lot of things first off hey hey look at that i carved this down so those aren't all big and floppy uh i've been wearing that like almost 24 7 but i realized after a bit that as much as i need to let the nerves rest in here Using this 24-7 is speeding up how quickly the muscles and the nerves atrophy in the hand. 
and it's I don't know I might I feel almost like I'm getting some back but at the same time the fatigue and pain is just getting worse as everything compensates so it's not so much that it's getting better but the parts that are that aren't as badly affected are working harder to cover the parts that are so that's that's kind of a mess because oh man right now it's such a pain keeping it just upright oh man that sucks take care of your nerves it really blows I had to take a shower today without it. This thing here. And man, talk about a pain. Try washing your hair with uh, one hand and a mass of noodles. A little difficult. So I just need to hook this back up and we'll get on to thing number two. Thing number two is actually two things that happened instead of four you see I went to the dentist today to get my teeth ripped out and uh, I've been told that I grind my teeth all my dentists have told me that I grind my teeth when I sleep I sleep I don't know but the evidence is there that's partially what made my teeth so bad is that a grind during the night apparently again i i'm asleep when it's happening i have no evidence of it except for the fact that my teeth are awful uh my son when he sleeps he grinds his teeth hard i can hear him going Cree! all night as he's just grinding his teeth but let's see it was about yes my teeth in the lady are because of grinding A lot of them. Oh yes, 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 yes. I remember. You see, we were going to get four of my upper teeth pulled out on the side, but because I have ground my teeth for decades, I have really strong jaw muscles. I mean, they atrophied a bit in the past year because I've had so much dental problems. But I can almost, if I had the teeth to do it my muscles could almost bite through like copper pipe i can just stronger than like most people should and because of that you see the human body is extremely dynamic and it's amazing it's beautiful uh if you put per portions of your body under stress it will compensate and get tougher areas that don't get work get weaker because I was always grinding and pulling, of course, when you use a muscle, it gets stronger. So my muscles got stronger, which meant I could grind harder, which meant I could, they got tougher, which meant I could grind harder. And so the bone, bone in the human body is extremely dynamic as well. Because of the constant stress of grinding, I have had my body building up my jaw and my upper jaw up here for decades. My bone in here is extremely dense. They could not get the teeth out. They had to take, oh, a bird, go away, go away. He's a big dog. They had to take a bone cutter and cut away chunks of my jaw up here to get the teeth out. I was awake during all this. That is such a sickening smell of uh, burning living bone through the friction of the uh, bone saw as they were cutting chunks of my uh, bone out to get my teeth. It smelled horrible. I, the dentists were incredible all the way through putting the needle in and such i didn't feel a thing this is the first time that's ever happened i mean he 
It was really weird. He took his little uh, mirror, put it underneath my lip, and was just going like bop, 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 constantly shaking here. But I never felt a thing. The needle anywhere. He, he even had to get the inside. Yeah, you feel how tender that is. When he put the needle in there to give me a shot, I wasn't numb up there, and I was terrified that it was going to hurt like hell. But he did that same stuff. I never felt it. It was great. My teeth just went, my mouth, not my teeth, my mouth just went numb. And I knew he had the needle there, I could see it. But I just kept my eyes closed and he shook the thing and my mouth went numb. And then they had to start cutting chunks of bone out when they couldn't get anything to move. Uh, I'm kind of sad about that because we're going to take out four teeth. I had to take out just two because of that. It cost the same amount because it was such a hard surgical extraction. Yay. Um, I almost wish that I could have gotten that another tooth out. I'm going to show you as best I can with the camera here and all, but the tooth that's left there is like half a tooth. The rest of it's been broken off, chunked, smashed, lost through feelings and all that. It's like half a tooth, and that's what I've been chewing on. It is black from decay. Yay! While I've been brushing, while I've been flossing, remember, this is not from neglect. This is me desperately trying to keep my teeth and doing everything I can. I mean, using all the the mouthwashes, the Crest Pro Health stuff. I mean, I they. It's because I fought so hard that I got them now. Let's see if we can show you that awful, disgusting molar there. I've only recently semi been able to talk clearly before I do an and jump that. Uh, I got my teeth out. They started pulling them out around noonish, and it's right now 10:44 p.m. It's only been the last hour that this has stopped hurting so much that I can actually talk. Before I was like, well, she always lost me teeth, and she was really always bad because I was just drooling and it wouldn't stop bleeding even after nine hours. Finally, I, I bit onto a uh, tea bag and that stopped the bleeding, but oh my god, that hurt so bad. It was like biting onto a uh, a red hot coal until I couldn't dig it anymore to get out but by then it's still losing a little but only like a, a drop every half hour or so instead of like uh, my lips were black with blood and it was disgusting but let's see, let's see if we can show you this horrible horrible tooth you can see the holes see those two that's where the tooth was, two teeth were. I don't know if you can see the bone and where they took chunks of bone out. But there's that nice disgusting molar. Look at that. Half gone, half broken. See how that fits when I close? Ow. Yay! Aren't those gross? And that's what's left on here. I was so proud of my teeth for so many years because I fought so hard to keep them. At least probably another year, year and a half, I'll have dentures, and then it'll be good. It'll be fine. Oh! Um. The copying. We. This is what's left on my F drive that I'm copying of that much. I have 15 gigs remaining at 1.57. It says about two hours. I'll be lucky if it finishes by tonight. Then. Oh, then, my friends. 
then I just have to spend like another six or seven hours catching all the little bits and pieces that weren't the easy to find stuff, finish copying them over, then I can yank the power cord and the interface cable out of that thing and then possibly pull it out. Maybe just leave it there. I'm not sure. My fans are dying too. The whole thing. It's ancient. I mean, it's a, it's good for what it was. And for the time, it was the bomb. But that was like 15 years ago. Well, probably not 15, like 10 or, or 12. Let's see. That teeth. Oh, yeah, I wanted to show you the precautions that I've done. Remember, I cannot smoke for pain control. And that's bad. Uh, so I still have this... Uh, Cannabis Harlequin, it's a uh, high CDB, but it's also a sativa dominant, so it doesn't just put you to sleep. And uh, what I do for that, and I'm pretty sure I showed you in another video, and I'm showing you again. In fact, I did, but you remember the holes there? This stuff is amazing how quickly and well it helps you heal. I let it melt and flow through my mouth. Make sure it gets up here into the, the socket. Bob's best oils. Tincture. It's a kind of a localish product. And they're putting in a great big old uh, state. The state is building a great big farm for pot real close. And a friend of mine is in on the ground level for getting in on that. He's helping build the stuff. And he's going to, um, he's already worked for the state. So he'd just be transferring from one place to another. And he'd be helping in the pot place there. And that's pretty awesome. I just wish the rules weren't changing. You see, under medical marijuana laws right now in Washington State, I'm allowed uh, 24 ounces and 15 plants. Now, I don't have anywhere near that. But the fact is, I could have that so I could have a 60-day supply. Washington State doesn't like the fact that dispensaries aren't making them money. And so they're shutting down the medical dispensaries so that they'll have recreational stores open instead where it's all more expensive and they're changing it so you can only have like goddamn flies i hate black flies black flies everywhere here. um so you only get like three ounces and three plants and that that goes fast that's not good. Washington is screwing me over and I don't like it. This is the only, this stuff is what saved me. And they're trying to take it away. I mean, YouTube saved my life after my wife died. But this stuff made it so that I can move and walk travel, do things, not just slowly fade away on the sofa. I also bought a couple of these. This is a dark chocolate plus sea salt 420 bar. So called because it says um, pure dark chocolate is kissed with salt from the sea in this rustic 420 bar. Follow in my footsteps. You might like where it takes you. I'm proud to call the Pacific Northwest my home. Now what this has is uh, this dark chocolate 64% cacao and it also contains, it's called 4.2 bar because it contains 4.2 grams of dried cannabis in it. This is a, almost a $15 bar. You get two for 25 I bought four. There's five chunks. You break it, and each of these, it's in five segments. They say...
It says, contains medical cannabis, not for food use. One segment max per dose. And what they say is consumption advice can tell you know the effect. Effect, eat only half a segment and wait a minimum of 75 minutes before consuming another portion. I don't know if it's still my weight. I mean, because I weigh like 195 now, but I can eat two of these segments and uh, I get pain control, but that's it. In fact, out of all these things, I just get pain control. These are a hassle to eat though, because it's chocolate, it's crunchy. I'm gonna try and eat it as best I can, like a this piece in this piece. I also bought a couple containers of, uh, here, this is a bit that's, uh, Tropical Punch Sensi Sweets. It is, uh, 70 milligrams THC minimum. And it's in such small print that I can't read a goddamn thing on it. But it's, uh, no, it's water, orange juice, beet sugar, fresh pineapple, Sorbic acid, citric acid, potassium sorbate, and approximately 70 milligrams of water soluble THC with an emulsifier. This is just one serving. They had at another dispensary um, bottles that were a little bit bigger than this that had 11, 11 servings. And uh, the people at that dispensary pissed me off, so I ended up not buying anything today. You see, if you go on the interstate, um, we're at exit 104, and I drove down to exit 88 to get to this dispensary. And uh, when I got there, I it was my fault. I was an idiot. I forgot to go to an ATM and get money. And... It's very few dispensaries take anything but cash. And so I was there, I went, oh no, do you have an ATM or do you take plastic? Well, they didn't have an ATM. They don't take plastic. They said, there's a, an ATM at the tattoo parlor down at the end of their driveway, not half a mile. And uh, if that's closed and it's closed erratically, then there's an ATM at the bar that's kind of kitty quarter from the tattoo parlor. Well, I said, thank you very much. I'll be right back, left, and I uh, drove home. Because uh, I can get pissy in times, so and that was one of them, where I figured, hey, you know, obviously the tattoo parlor wants my money, the bar wants my money, uh, but the dispensary doesn't. So I drove from exit 88 all the way back up. Uh, the 104 came home, went over to this other dispensary and bought the stuff there. They have an ATM. They want my money. Then, of course, amoxicillin and a bionic. Uh, I need to take testosterone shots fairly regularly, or my immune system bottoms out. And I mean, the last time I got uh, cellulitis, a skin infection in my leg, I almost died. In fact, uh, it, was, it was that close. I was, they had to drag me, kicking and screaming back over death's door. And this is a hydrocortone acetaminophen pain pill. And because I can't eat a damn thing, I bought a pack of uh, these Slim Fast protein shakes. So at least I get something in me until I heal up a bit. No, I only got four of these. So I'm going to eat. I drank one, I got this here, and I got another two after that. I've had a couple bars of this, segments of a different one of these. I got three. That bottle is, uh, you can see where the level is. And you can see where that level is. All this stuff is going to last me until the bone and the gum heal up enough that I can smoke. If this stuff works as well at healing up like it did last time, should only be about a week. Hopefully I got enough stuff to last me until then, otherwise, oh boy, I'm going to have to try smoking carefully anyway.
Ah, that pretty much covers it all. I've gone and uh, had my head ripped open. Um, I'm waiting to hear from the VA on this. I don't know how. I don't have a phone. My internet and my phone are gone. They're not coming back. Uh, and pretty soon I'm going to lose my house. So I'm not going to have that address anymore. So. Yay. At least, though, my brother-in-law has said I'm going to be living in the basement of this house here. They're going to charge me some rent for food and stuff like that, power, etc., etc., because I'll need to use the, the internet and all that. But at least I'll have some place to stay. <sighs> Thank God, that's a weight off my shoulders. He is saying, you know, that, you know, a couple months down the road, you can see about moving. His wife is saying, well, you know, maybe he just wants to stay. Hey, you know, my kids live here. My kids are going to be living here until they're both 18. My daughter is 12. My son just turned 11. So I don't want to move out until then. I mean, the fact that I live across the street has been such a really good thing because they just run across the street whenever they want to come see me. I run across the street whenever I want to come see them. That works out real good. If I live in the basement, it'd be even better. I'll be in the same household. I won't have to worry about when I'm going to see my kids. Because if I move across, uh, even as little as a mile away, you can hear me slur. I can hear me slur because this thing up here. But if I did move even as much as a mile away, I'd never see my kids again because they're. Uh, who makes an impulse trip of, hey, let's go a mile away? You don't. I can sometimes hardly drag the kids across the street because they want to like stay over here and like watch anime and stuff. They're not going to go a mile away and see me. And uh, I know me, it's going to be tough just to get up and go a mile to do something. Pain in the arse. I'm going to be staying here, I think. Only one way to find out though. It's not a basement basement. His, uh, my brother-in-law's daughter and her husband, when they were first married, the first year, they lived down in the basement here. It's a, there's a bedroom and a living room. So a couple of smaller areas. It's got to be shared with a garage and for the outer area, but for the back area, it's just, it's got a kitchenette. It's really nice. It just doesn't have a bathroom. Got to come upstairs. I'm going to have to do something about the flies and all that before I can use the bathrooms here. You know, and I've got a washer and a dryer. We, my wife and I bought a washer and a dryer, and she died just before we finished paying them off. So they're mine. I, I'm not going to give them up. They're mine, damn it. And I don't know where I'm going to put them, but damn it, they're my washer and my dryer. So I have been almost a half hour at this. Oh, I guess this one is since. Um, my, it's uh, My Life in Pictures and Words number five, huh? If you like what you've seen, like what you've heard, toss me a like. If you haven't seen, if you haven't liked what you've heard or seen, don't toss me a dislike. Just keep that one to yourself and we're both good. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, you really should. I mean, and you really should. I mean, there's no negatives to not subscribing other than that you don't get a constant stream of me personally i think that's really bad you should be getting a constant stream of me and i like that idea so you should sub and if you have share the video see if you can get somebody else to sub so that they too can be exposed to a constant stream of me any comments, write them down below. I read them all and I try to write them back to them. Write back to them. Comment that. Answer. That's the word I was looking for. I answer them as quickly as I can. Thumbs up. Thank you very much. I appreciate everything that each and every one of you does. Keep metabolizing.